Hi there guys, and this is the final part of the lightsaber tutorial where we're going to be doing some compositing. So compositing is like post-production. So at the end of the previous tutorial, this is how far we'd got. So we've got a nice metallic looking texture. We've got the gold color on the lightsaber. We have the beam. Um, however, we're going to do some post-production to this, which is called compositing in Blender. And that will allow us just to add a little bit more realism to this, some blur around the edges of this lightsaber, etc. So, um, one thing we're going to need to do, first of all, is turn on Material Index and AO, that's Ambient, ambient Occlusion, in our um, Passes. So, in the Rendering Options, Passes, Make sure you have material index and ambient, and ambient occlusion turned on. Now we're going to select our lightsaber beam. And over here in the settings, you want to change the pass index um, of this to, to 2. So let's go over that again. You want to make sure that you have material index and AO turned on. And then in the actual material for the lightsaber beam, you want to change the pass index to two. Okay, so that's the um, setup. Come up to render and hit render and it will render out our scene. So this is with no compositing. And we're gonna change our window to the compositing window We'll turn on Use Nodes, we'll turn on Backdrop, we'll hit the Render button. Now it renders out an image. Okay. So, now when we make changes in our comp comp composition, our compositing window here, You'll be able to see the output in the background there as, as we're working on it. So here in our render layers, we have um, the index MA, that's our material index, and we also have ambient occlusion here as well. And we're going to add in an ID mask. So we'll go to add, search, ID mask. And we're going to change that to 2. And we're going to plug the index, material index, into that ID mask. And then here, coming out the top of here with the image and the ambient inclusion, we want to come out to a multiply node. So to get the multiply node, it's actually a math node which has the multiply setting selected. So um, you're going to search for a math node. You're going to change it from add to multiply. And you're going to drop that in here. We're also going to drag in then the ambient occlusion to there as well. So Multiply the two values there are the image and ambient occlusion. occlusion. So that will be a mix node, sorry, that we then change to multiply, not a math node. It's a mixed node, which is changed to multiply. We'll grab the amb ambient occlusion there. Right. Sorry, there's two different multiply nodes. There's a math and a mix. And we want the mix, not the math. Okay, because uh, if you use the math multiply, as you can see, it, it made everything go black and white. So when you, want, when you search, it's going to be a mixed node and you're going to select multiply 
from that mix node. Okay, so then next, coming um, out of the ID mask, you're going to have another multiply, but this one is a math, which we change to multiply. And coming into here will be the alpha from our ID mask, which plugs into the top there. And then the next one we're going to have is a um, erode, a dilate and erode, which we plug in from there. Okay, so we've got our render layers. The material index is plugged into an ID mask which goes to a math multiply, which goes to a dilate and erode. And the dilate and erode then goes to a mix node. So the next one we add in will be the mix shader there. We'll drag that into the mix. Um, actually, we're going to have a blur before this. And this will be a fast Gaussian blur. I'll plug the mask into there. I think we've got that all set up correctly now. So now if we shift and control, we can view an output from an individual one of one of these here. Uh, we want to plug this into the image there. And then we can up this blur, we change it to relative, and we'll change this to 8 on both axes. And you'll see that now, in our preview there, what we've got is a blur around our lightsaber and the the more you increase this which number the more of a blur you're going to get so we can adjust those later on we'll just leave that at 8 for for now and then this blur shader is going to plug into an add shader So again, it's a math add shader, and the blur is going to plug into the um, factor of this mix shader. And the mix shader we change to add. And the blur plugs into the factor there. The output from this mix shader, the output from this um, mix shader is going to then go to our viewer and composite. So here, we'll plug that in, and also here. Okay, so now we're not quite done. Um, we need to add in some more nodes at the top here. So we have our multiply, which is going to plug into a despeckle node. So it plugs into the image part of the despeckle node there. And then from the output of the despeckle, we're going to have two blur nodes. I'll plug into there and then shift and D to duplicate. 
and it's going to plug into itself. The top one, now both of these also want to change to fast Gaussian. Relative, we'll change the top one to four, and the bottom one will change to eight. And now the output from both of these is going to go to another mix shader. Zoom in and make it a bit easier. So the top one goes to the bottom, the bottom one will go to the top. And this will be changed to an add. And then the output from this goes to the bottom of our final add mix shader. And our D speckle is going to plug into the center there. Okay. And now you can see, after all this has all been hooked up, I'm going to move those. We now have a nice blurred effect around the edge of the light beam coming from our lightsaber. So this is a little bit of a complicated setup, but you can see it's worth it because it really adds to that effect. So I'll just run through these nodes again from the beginning. So you have your render layers on the far left with the image and the ambient occlusion connected to a mix shader, which is set to multiply. That multiply mix shader then comes out to a D speckle. The D speckle connects to two blur nodes. Both of those blur nodes are then added together. The top blur node is set to four, the bottom set to eight. Those are added together with a mix shader, which goes down to another mix shader. The D speckle is also plugged into the final mix shader. And then running along the bottom here, from our index, material index, we have an ID mask, a mix multiply, dilate and erode, which is going to be set to feather, which comes out to a blur, which goes into our final mix add shader. So that is the basic setup of the composite. Now you can go through and adjust settings here. So if you adjust the feathering, you can see that we can adjust how much of a glow we have around the lightsaber there. So the greater the feathering you have, the more of a the more spread out that glow is going to become. So it's up to you on how much you want that glow to stick out. I want it not to come out too far, so I'm just going to have a, a relatively low feathering number there. I want the glow to stick pretty close. Um, in our despeckling, you can adjust the threshold as to how much despeckling you're actually going to going to have. You can see if we have that set to zero, we have a lot more speckling. So the higher we have this set, the more speckles it's going to remove. So I'm going to leave this at 0 0.5 and the threshold maybe I'll take down to 0.7. Okay, so other than that, um, the other thing you may want to change are these blur values. So the more blurring that you have um, on this bottom one here, 
If we up the blur, you'll see it changes the the look of the blur around the edge of the lightsaber there. So depending on how much blur you add will depend on the look of the light beam. So you can just want to play around with those values to get the look that you want. Once you're happy with the way everything is looking here, we're ready to basically go for our final render. So come back to our default view and here in our render settings in our sampling you're going to want to change from sampling pre uh, presets to final and I'm going to up the render probably to 45 now the higher number of samples you get the nicer render you'll get but also the longer it's going to take to render out so um, 45 might take a little bit of time to do but um, it's okay, as this will be our final render. Then we'll just hit the render button, and it will begin to render everything out. So I'm just going to pause this while the render is ongoing, because it can take a while to do, and I'll see you in a few moments. And so that took around eight or so minutes to render, and there we have our final output. So. Um, you can do a little bit of tweaking. You may want to play around with some of the materials. This um, plane here has got a few too many maybe reflections on it. It's causing this um, speckling in the render. But there's the basic idea of how to use the node editor to set up materials and also then how to use the node editor in compositing mode to add in this blurred effect to our lightsaber at the end there. So I think the output's pretty good. Um, Feel free to play around with this yourself. You can use these same texturing type um, um, principles and apply them to your own lightsaber design if you want. Um, so there we go. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all my latest tutorials for Blender.